Our reporter Judith Subban is on the story. She joins us live now from KwaZulu-Natal. There is a slight delay on this line. Good afternoon to you, Judith. Uh, just take us, first of all, through the happenings at the press conference at which this was announced. Well, good afternoon, Joan. Uh, we are standing outside Senzo Mkunu's Empangeni home in KwaZulu-Natal, where he's met with selected media to discuss the roaring rumors that have started since Friday, as you mentioned. Um, and he's told us in a one-on-one -on -one interview that he has decided to comply with the ANC's NWC to step down as KwaZulu-Natal's premier. He says he met with the KZN ANC leadership on Friday uh, to discuss uh, the issue and six accusations were leveled against him. He's declined, however, to be drawn on what those accusations were, saying only that he was rather disappointed at what he calls a lack of decorum, as well as unfairness in the manner in which that these levels, uh, these, sorry, these accusations were leveled against him. He then went on to uh, engage in discussions with Secretary General Gwede Mantashe over the weekend to discuss the, uh, the matter. And he was informed that the matter is part of a discussion that not only involves the ANC's provincial leadership, but national leadership and is in, indeed a national move. So he has decided, as he says, to comply with that. However, he has said that he will be writing to the SG to discuss the manner in which this was carried out. As I say, he's very disappointed and feels that it could have been carried out in a better manner, that it does not follow the ANC culture and does not follow the way in which the party has dealt with similar matters over the years. That's very interesting indeed, because one would have assumed uh, that if the party were to level these accusations against him, it would take him through an appropriate disciplinary process if, if that was what the accusations warranted before it made any decision to remove him. Yes, indeed, uh, Joanne. And, and one of the questions I actually put to him was, um, how he feels about the provincial leadership. We know there's been a, a plethora of uh, media reports indicating bad blood between him and now ANC chairman Sishle Zigalala. However, uh, Senzo Mkunu has indicated that he is still an ANC member. He will still be lobbying for the party as we head to elections and that he will continue to follow their direction. Who will replace him, Judith? At this stage, he is refusing to discuss cabinet redeployment of any such sort. We did ask him about the reported rumors that several MECs will also be asked to step down. He is in instead dealing with only uh, matters regarding himself and says that uh, he will now be discussing, as I say, with the SG about moving to uh, the National Assembly, which is uh, the move that seems to be on the cards for him at this stage. Judith Subban, thanks very much for putting us on the picture live to us from Kwasudu Natal, where that press conference took place just a short while ago, Senza Mkunu resigning. Joining us in studio, our reporter, Kholi Gambi, who's been following this story very closely from us and, in fact, broke it uh, on Friday evening. Kholi, uh, I just want to go back a bit to these uh, initial reports that Senza Mkunu was not going to go quietly, that he was going to wait for the president to make a decision on whether he should resign or not. Clearly, he's decided to go. He's decided to go, Joanne, but uh, clearly the pressure has come from the ANC national. But of course, I think it would have been precipitated uh, from provincial level. And so he, as I think as uh, Judith reports, he then I think would have escalated it to the Secretary General of the ANC, which is Gwede Mantashe. And uh, as it appears now, it was eventually the decision of the National Working Committee of uh, the ANC for him to step up, for him to step down. Um, look, so I suppose there may not necessarily be anything wrong about that politically, Joanne. But the important thing and what puzzles me is where is the president's voice in this? Because remember, premiers are appointed by the president, President Jacob Zuma. In fact, I remember posing the very same question at the actual provincial conference that. Uh, um, where, where Senzo Mkunu lost out as chairperson of the province. Um, this question was responded to both by the now chairperson, Sekhle Zigalala, and his deputy, Willis Mkunu, whom, by the way, we understand is going to step in as premier until the end of term. And both of them basically saying that that decision of premiers 
as to who fires and hires uh, premiers. That is the decision of the president. But now I'm not hearing anything here about where the president's voice is in this uh, because the understanding is that I think there was some resistance from his side uh, having been told uh, by the provincial leadership and as Judith says that uh, there were several accusations, I think about six she says, that were leveled against him. We know that he has uh, been accused by the provincial leadership or should we say reports have been that um, he is not carrying out uh, the wishes of the provincial leadership of the ANC in government. So I suppose it has to do, therefore, with uh, certain governance matters. Uh, but again, I think it goes back to our initial discussion on Friday, Joanne, which was the ANC has always said, or has always been, uh, it's, always, it's always had this uh, a problem of two centers of power, mm. that if a different person is the premier, uh, of the province, but that very same person is not the chairperson of the province, then he does not uh, have political clout. And that, therefore, as a result, becomes a challenge uh, when these two uh, structures have to come to, you know, uh, some kind of decision or where, when they have to speak with one voice. There does seem to be a uh, tensions between uh, those that lead the party um, at provincial level and of course the person that leads the party or that leads the government at provincial level. There, there are two problems I'm, I'm picking up here Chloe and, and perhaps you can expand on them for me and the one is, is uh, have we blurred the line here? Are we seeing a, an example of where the line between between state and party has been blurred in terms of, of the removal of this Premier and secondly has due process actually been followed in terms of what uh, Mkunu was entitled to uh, in terms of having you know, having the accusations put to him and, and him being given a chance to either refute them or, or defend himself. Well, clearly he feels that uh, due process has not been followed because, as Judith reports, uh, the, he's going to have further discussions with Mandasha because he feels really aggrieved about the unfair manner uh, in which this has been carried out. Clearly, uh, there hasn't been due process. You speak about uh, the blurring of the lines. We know just a few weeks ago, if not a week ago, we had the public protector coming out and, uh, uh, in a way, almost lashing the ANC for blurring the lines between party and state. And uh, you ask a similar question here. Uh, and, and I think uh, the, the lines are clearly blurred in this instance as well. I mean, how is it possible that um, the National Working Committee, how, how is it possible that the party uh, recalls a premier of the province, whereas the president, we understand, or we constantly told, is the one that has the hiring and firing powers? Uh, but then having said that, Joanne, we must also remember that the ANC deploys in government and it has a subcommittee or a structure within it that is called the deployment committee. Uh, that deployment committee uh, is the one that's responsible therefore for pinpointing certain people for certain responsibilities. Uh, what will also be interesting for me Joanne here is as a result of this decision therefore are we going to see this uh, imminent cabinet reshuffle in the province as well because there's been lots of talk about that. Six MECs have already threatened uh, that they are going to be uh, resigning in protest. Uh, perhaps it could be the way that we are receiving information. Uh, it may be that um, it is um, a cabinet reshuffle that was going to take place, but it's going to be very interesting to see whether that indeed will be carried through because there already has been some talk. For example, the IFP is saying that uh, if this reshuffle is to the best interest of uh, serving the province uh, or serving the people of Gazul Natal, then sure, by all means. But if it has to do with party political matters, uh, then perhaps, you know, uh, this is not the best way to do it. If Senzo Mkunu was delivering in Kwazul Natal, what is the reason for removing him except uh, to do away with this, uh, this uh, so-called two centers of power issue, which the ANC has always found itself? The very perfect example of that was here in Gauteng, Nomvula Mokonyane led and um, the leadership of former Shatile in the province as chairperson, and it was a very, very difficult uh, period for her as a premier of the province because some of the things just did not uh, work the way that she would have wanted to as leader of government. Very interesting indeed, Chloe. Thank you for pack unpacking that for us so well. Uh, Chloe Mgambi, our reporter, bringing us more on that breaking news story, Senzo Mkunu having just stepped down as premier of KwaZulu-Natal.